Hi folks, I'm Matt and welcome to My Expanded Universe, a show where I go through the entire EU in chronological order as best I know how. Folks, it's time to go to Troy Denning's novel in the Legacy of the Force series called Inferno. And things are really heating up now. This story kicks off with Mara Jade's funeral. Of course, it's a sad time. Luke is there, Ben is there, and Jason's there. Are we feeling awkward yet? Because I don't think at this point they know that Jason's the killer, but we all do. And we're like, oh my gosh, what is he doing showing up there? Because he's putting on a full act. Now, Luke kind of knows that you know Jason is not on the straight and narrow here. Uh, but at the same time, he doesn't suspect that he would dip so low as to kill his own wife, uh, Jason's aunt. So, and then Ben, of course, completely trusts uh, uh, Jason and thinks that you know he did no wrong and that it was Lumia, who, and now she's gone, but still doesn't bring his mother back. Jason, at this point, has basically gone ahead and given up on Ben ever becoming a Sith. Some of the tests he's made really ha hasn't changed. Uh, been on anything, so he's thinking I need to find an apprentice because you know there always needs to be two, and Lumia's dead. And he's like, okay, what can I do? Well, he goes after Tahiri. Great choice. Tahiri, as we know, has already been kind of messed up. Remember, she was part of the Vong forming. She's kind of part Vong two now. She dipped into the dark side in the earlier series, and she's the perfect candidate. And how Jason tempts her is very intriguing, just like a dark Jedi. He allows himself to flow walk with her back to the time of Anakin's death in New Jedi Order. And basically is kind of lying to Tahiri, saying, hey, I can get, I can bring Anakin back together, you know. If we learn about the Sith, there are ways to bring her back. Just like how the Emperor tempted Anakin by saying, "We can save her," you know, "We can save Padme." And so this one is something that totally convinces Tahiri. He says, "Yes, I will join," because she's still the death of Anakin is still a sore spot for her. She's still recovering after all that, and after all that's been she's been messed with. And now here's Jason using her. Yeah, total dirtbag play here. But at the same time, Jason needs a backup plan because things haven't been going his way. Now uh, Almarar, she actually accidentally no I think she I don't think I think it's by accident she finds the planet of the one Sith from Darth Krayt now Darth Krayt is in hibernation right now but the one Sith are guarding the planet she shows up there you kind of figure what's going on it's connecting to the legacy of the force combo she's like hey how's it going they're like you need to leave you're you never heard about us you're not part of this plan you go off on yourself but you're not welcome here and it's just like a one little short cameo to let you know yeah the one Sith are out there and they're waiting Thanks. I, I didn't need to know that, but since Legacy had told us they were waiting for, you know, a millennia or years or whatever, you know, 100 years or whatever, I guess it's nice to see them still waiting. They just had to make that connection, I guess. I told you earlier, I think in the last book, that even though Jason's power has grown, Luke will always be stronger. And he keeps showing that to Jason. In fact, there, and I believe it's right here that he does it. Uh, you see, Jason and Luke are having a talk, and Luke's like, look, Jason, you've gone on, this has gone on long enough. You think you're a big shot. You think you know it all, but you don't. I know the path you're going on, and it's dangerous. Now, Jason scoffs at Luke. What does Luke know? Luke hasn't traveled uh, around to all these other force uh, sensitive cultures before and hasn't studied as much as he has. And even though he does know that he, he can do things that Luke can't do, he mistakes. He, he makes the prideful mistake that he is better than Luke and he knows more than Luke and he is more than a match for Luke. And he basically tells him so. And there's a wonderful moment, and I'm going to misquote it because it's been a while since I've read it, but I remember it's, you know, Luke kind of says, if you're so powerful, stand up. Because Jason's sitting in a chair. That's when Jason realizes he can't get out of the chair. <laughs> Luke is pinning him down. And, even, and after his whole speech about Luke knows nothing what he knows, Jason is way more powerful. 
he can't even get out of a chair because Luke is holding him down with zero effort too. As powerful as Jason is, he is nothing compared to Luke. Now this makes him furious and he's you know, yelling and screaming and ordering his uncle to let him go. And I believe, again, it's been a while since I've read this, but I believe Luke kind of waves his hand, if I remember, and suddenly Jason's released from his chair. Like, it's just like a, I'll let you go. But Luke isn't even sweating it. I love that. I love that scene so much. And there's so many times where we see that Luke is just way more powerful and he can do anything if he wants to. But he gives Jason his stern warning. Remember at this point, he still doesn't know that that is Mara Jade's murder. He just knows that Jason has gone too far. He gives him that warning and then kind of shows him, you know, boy, I can put you down whenever I want. I love that. I love that. I absolutely love Luke's character. Um, I'm, I've always been a huge Luke Skywalker character, and I love what the EU was doing with him as the books went on. And, and here it's no different. That scene, if it was, I, I'm almost positive it was in this book, is just a great scene. Again, it may not have happened scene for scene like I remember, but I remember something like that, which I absolutely adored. Now, this book kind of ends with Ben discovering the truth about Jason. Jason is evil. Jason is a Sith. Oh my gosh, you know, Ben has been wrong this whole time. So he goes and attacks uh, Jason. Of course, that doesn't work out well for him. He gets captured and locked up. Jason now has him as leverage, he thinks, against Luke. Luke is going to break it, break in and, and help Ben escape, and they're going to travel off together. So that whole, that, that, that's a lot of the book there, and I don't want to spoil too much, even though I know I'm giving a lot of spoilers. I'm giving just enough to explain the next story afterwards. But overall, Legacy of the Force at this point, in my opinion, is really taken off. I mean, you had that surprise of Mar Jade, and now, for me, I was thinking, okay, who dies next? Because I was in New Jail Order mode, and they go, no. No, 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 no. No one else dies. We're just going to continue the story now because we're not about Nujo or about killing someone off every book. We just wanted to get, hit you with something big, and now we're going to give you some time to breathe, which I think was a smart move. All right, folks, I'll see you next time with another video.